The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for all your goodness, and steadfast wills to use your bounty well, that the whole human family, today and in generations to come, may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Oh, heavens, do we ever need to hear that. Friends, today our Lord gives us advice which, on the surface, sounds charming, winsome even, but at its heart is serious and very, very hard. For us to act upon, to not worry so much about the material state of our lives. Now, I have to think that this is about more than simply not obsessing over our food and our clothing. Usually, Jesus is saying more than he says. But at its heart, that is what he is saying. 
trust that God will provide. Now, if we trust that God will provide, and so we just go to the kitchen every night and sit down at an empty table with knife and fork, waiting for the food to show up, well, we are going to be disappointed. God provides, but God has given us means of obtaining this provision. Means such as working, means such as farming, means such as gardening, etc. Not to mention cooking. And so there has to be a process involved. But we live on an abundant planet. We live on a planet where we waste more food than would be necessary to feed all who are hungry. Why do we not husband those resources more carefully? Why do we not more freely share? Why do we not practice better self-control? Probably because we don't trust. I do not trust that I will have enough, and so I will keep extra. Over and against you, because I don't trust that there is ample. And if you want an example of this, go to the beginning of the pandemic when people started buying toilet paper like crazy, not trusting that there will be enough. The number of bums in Canada hasn't changed. It's not going to run out. And yet, afraid that there would be a shortage, people panic bought, and then there was a shortage, wasn't there? And so I think there is, at the heart of this, the kernel of practical advice about not being so worried about our day-to-day -day life that we make our day-to-day -day life a worry. But obviously the carrying out of that advice involves something deeper than a Bobby McFerrin don't worry, be happy sort of philosophy. It requires us to trust. It requires us to acknowledge that there is one who gives. And in acknowledging that fact, we will be led to thanksgiving. I've always found Thanksgiving such an interesting holiday, widely observed by people of all stripes of faith, including people who believe in no God whatsoever, and yet here they are giving thanks. To whom? Thanking the universe? Well then, the universe is your name for God. Thanking chance? Thanking happenstance? Thanking dumb luck? Well then, those are your names for God. Because if you can be thankful, not just happy, it's not Happy Giving's Day, but if you can be thankful, if you feel in your heart that you have been given a gift in this life, whether it is the gift of material riches, the gift of security and safety, the gift of a loving family, the gift of supportive friends, whatever gifts you have in this world, whatever has come to you that you feel grateful for, if you have that response of gratitude, then you must believe that it has been given to you by someone. Chance doesn't give gifts. Chance just is. Gifts are given by someone. And so, in a way, this is the most religious of holidays, although on its surface it can seem entirely secular the most religious of holidays because it emphasizes a particular relationship, the giver and the receiver, the provider and the provided for, God and us. And to offer up thanksgiving, to react to the great blessings of our life with thanks, is to state not only that God exists, but that God cares for us that God wills us good. And surely, surely, if we believe that, then we will not worry about our life, what we will eat, or what we will drink, about our body, what we will wear. And so this reading, so peculiar on this day of all days, the day before people will be worrying a great deal about what they will eat, and how long it will take to cook, and whether they've made enough, and whether their guests are even going to be able to attend this year, Please, please, we hope this year we can have a normal Thanksgiving. On this day, to hear this reading can seem strange, and yet it makes all the sense in the world. If we give thanks, it means we trust. And if we trust, what worry do we have? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.